Hey gang, Diana here today. We're going to color some of those great big acorns. Let's get going. I started coloring these acorns and I'm getting rid of some of the stuff mess that's on my desk. And um, I thought, oh, wait a minute. Let me show you how to use these uh these are Kuretake Classic Clean Color. I, I'll link them below. But basically, all of your dye inks, your Tombos, Distress inks, work in the same way. The only difference here is these have a brush. And they are nice. But if you have the other ones, you, no, it's up to you. Buy what you want. I bought them. I love them. I love the other ones too. Now I have a whole bunch of colors and I use them all together. So here's a way to use them. So I started coloring in this cap and this is one of those digital stamps uh, that I'm making and they're available over on my blog. There's a couple of free so you can get the idea of how to use them and a couple of free digital stamps. So one of the things you can do is I just started coloring in up here with this orange uh, 070 and then started going down, dragging that color down a little bit. So in case you like to do that really blended look and it does, it does kind of give you some volume. And the other way you can get that blended look is by actually doing this tip to tip transfer. And you can do this again with Tombos and with um, Distress. And what will happen is you'll get the orange at first and then it'll turn back to yellow. Real simple way of getting blending, blended color. Okay? And you basically want um, a bit of dark wherever there is a corner, wherever you think the light might not be hitting. So in other words, actually, um, these areas here are going to be darker. So this acorn is curving down away from the light. Another way I suggest that you get started with a lot of these things is by buying the grays um, and using, oops, using the gray as your dark color and I'll, I'll be using gray in a moment to show you exactly how that works but just going back and forth it does dry this is cardstock and it's actually not anything special it's just whatever FedEx stocks this would probably this works a lot nicer on a um, watercolor watercolor. So, let's hit that stem. Okay, let's get some greens. How about, it's a small stem area, so we're not going to need a lot. The other trick is to try to get colors that are close um, in value. So, I'm going to look at these two. And they're almost the same value, just a little different color. And this one just is a little bit more of an olivey color. And that works too. That works fine for me. In fact, I think what I'm going to do is put this minty color up here. Okay. And then we'll hit down low with this darker color and off to that little stem. And then go in here. And you know what? I think I will blend in some of this green. And I think I will do it that tip to tip method. Now these digital images can all be resized. Once you get it, it's a JPEG. And you can make them whatever size you want. Now don't go much bigger because it'll start to, to the image won't be so great. But um, you can see how that blended up there. Oh, I love that gold foiling. Oh my god. Anyway, um, back to the task at hand. Okay, I'm thinking purple would be really nice and festive. So, why not? Let's do it. Let's do purple. 
I have lavender here. I think I got a 48 set. You can do with a lot less because of this blending thing. I don't know what possessed me to get so many of these. I'm going to stay with these two, I think. Let's see what happens. So I'm going to start here. Well, that's a nice purpley color. This is going to be very festive. Very festive. And then a little darker. Oh, that's right. I wanted to talk to you about the grays. Okay. Let's do that. Okay. So I can see I'm just blending. Blending those two colors together. Let me grab that gray so I can show you before I forget again. I tend to have a tendency to get wrapped up in things. This is a green gray. I don't want to use that because that might interfere. That's a gray brown. That could work. The gray brown. We got the blue gray. You know, you want to stay away from the blue grays if. Oh, no, wait. Blue gray would be fine with purple. You don't want to go with a blue gray with orange. Um, okay, so. My suggestion, if you want to get started with these, is either buy yourself a set with, and throw caution to the wind or just add, they have some very nice grays and some very nice pale colors. So you might want to add just those to your Tombos and Distress. They're all, all of them are fade resistant. Now, one nice thing about these. You can see that blending nicely there. Okay, so we're we're blending this and I really like the way this blended. Now, I could have left this area light. And I'll show you what I mean over when I do this one. I'm just going to do a little bit of this to explain what I what I was going to do. Okay, so we're going in here we're going all around here and we're going to make sure I've got this lavender color. It's called lilac 083 or 063 or something. I'll, I'll put it all down in the links for you. Um, I really, <laughs> I mean, I know that there is no, I realize there are no purple acorns, but who's to say that you can't make them purple? They're so, such autumnal, and I'll probably trim this out and use it. I'm thinking, I'm, I'm thinking of how many ways I love, I love acorns so much and leaves. I love all the fall imagery, and um, I'm going in here with a little bit of that brown. It's the gray brown, just to add a little bit of grab that orange again. A little bit more shadow and I could actually, oops, I grabbed the purple. I could grab, make a little shadow right here and remember no staining. This is not going to stain on the foiling and also remember that if you are, you, you don't have to foil these images certainly, you can just print them out and um, this will, won't co cover the black lines. Also, you can print out these images, lighten them, lighten the lines on them if you're, if you're a Photoshop genius. I know you think you have to be a Photoshop genius. I think you can do that in um, Word, and uh, I think I can do it in iPhoto. So, um, I'll try that out and get back to you on this kind of things. But you can see, I can just play and play to a certain degree um, on cardstock and eventually the, um, the, 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 these are a little more wet than the Distress and Tombows, uh, but any of these brushes will will eventually begin to peel your paper, so be careful of that. Now, um, I'm going to go with a more normal, or let's call it traditional, because to me, that's perfectly normal. And I'll just show you one thing you could 
do is to create a little shine um, like your your acorn is shiny just leave some places white and uncolored and what I generally do is I draw a little box around where I want the shine to be. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, I think you can. So just draw a little box of where you're going to highlight it. The sun's coming from here and that's hitting there. So that's going to be highlighted. And maybe up here it will be as well. But every other technique I used over here can be used here. And I'm just going to put this on fast forward and do a little coloring. Thanks for staying with me here till the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed watching me color. Uh, don't forget to thumbs up if you enjoyed this. It helps my channel a lot. And subscribe if you enjoy what you're seeing here. Don't forget to check out the affiliate links below for supplies and my blog for more information. Thanks again. See you soon.